Well, hello, and Benedicite Dominus. Welcome to question 36 of the Secunda Secundae of the Summa Theologica of St. Thomas Aquinas. The topic for this lecture is Envy, and I am Dr. Thibault. So we are still under the uh, interior movements uh, of the vice associated with charity, right? So these are hatred, sloth, and envy. We are now on envy. Then next we will be moving into the actions which are contrary to charity, which would be uh, exterior acts of vice. So the first article, uh, what kind of thing is envy? What, what type of thing is, is it? And uh, St. Thomas points out that using uh, St. John Damascene, uh, envy is a type of sorrow. So it is uh, sorrow for another's good. Right? So this can happen in various ways and St. Thomas breaks these uh, down. Um, so the object, right, the object of envy is man's sorrow uh, the object of a man's sorrow is his own evil, right? So this is the object of sorrow. Um, so if your object of sorrow comes from uh, feeling envious of others, uh, it's uh, it can be, it can occur in two ways, which well, I've been trying to delay it, but jump into the next one. It happens in various ways. So in terms of envy being a sin. Uh, well, the sorrow occurs in four ways. So one is when you fear another's good. This is mentioned in the previous article, but since they're, they're the, practically the same, we'll incorporate it into this one, the explanation. So fear of another's good. So this, as an example, would be, uh, right now we're dealing with the war in the Ukraine. Um, if Russia were to get a huge uh, shipment of military equipment, right? Ukraine might be envious uh, in some ways of, uh, Ukraine might be envious of Russia, right? Look at all of the equipment that they have gotten in, military equipment. But this is an envy in terms of a sin. This is fear that your neighbor's good will lead to your own demise, right? So Russia's military equipment will lead to further attacks on your home country, right? So this, is, this isn't just, well, I'm envious of my neighbor's goods. This is, I'm afraid that their good will, be, will turn into my bad, right? <laughs> my demise. So that, that is not envy, purely speaking, right? It is sorrow of another's good, but it's not, it's not envy, purely speaking. Another one is zeal, right? And this is to have, is this desire, this passion to have what your neighbor has. Now this can be taken in two ways. So if I look at uh, someone like Mother Teresa and say, look how simply she loved, right? Just, she loved people just how they are, right? She just loved them and uh, she didn't get complicated. She didn't get stuck in the theology. She didn't get ca caught in the politics. She just simply loved people, right? She kind of had this perfect mercy that flowed from her. I'm jealous, right? Because I don't have this thing that Mother Angelica has, uh, Mother Teresa has. Um, if, I am, if I am jealous of her spiritual goods, because I also want to be as merciful as Mother Teresa. That's okay, St. Thomas says, right? Uh, it's okay to want to have the spiritual goods that others have. Not that you don't want them to have them as well, but that you would like them in addition, right? Ideally, the Mother Teresas of the world will still have their mercy, and I wish I could join them in their... Uh, in their expression of mercy, right? So this is an okay thing. Now, if I say, well, 
Jeff Bezos has uh, rockets that go to outer space, and I want those rockets. I want rockets to go out of space. Well, now you're not talking about spiritual goods. You're talking about stuff. You shouldn't have zeal for stuff. Being envious of your neighbor's stuff, not good, right? Because there's only so many rockets in the world, right? There's only so much money. So to say, I want what my neighbor has, in some ways you're dealing with the finite versus I wish to be merciful as my neighbor is merciful. Well, there's no shortage of mercy, right? Uh, ideally, every person on the planet would be as merciful as a Mother Teresa, right? Uh, and if we were all as merciful as Mother Teresa, it wouldn't diminish anybody's mercy, right? It's not my mercy for the sake of somebody else's, unlike rocket ships where there's a finite amount. And even if you say, well, you can make more, well, it would take money, right? It's, it would take money taken away from one thing to put it towards rocket ships. So there's a trade-off there dealing with the finite. Um, another one would be indignation. And this one, St. Thomas points out, is a sin, right? To have a certain indignation of your neighbor's good, right? Uh, my neighbor, they won the lottery and uh, I'm just mad at them, right? I just resent them that they're doing good. Uh, it's not that... I, not that I want what they have or don't want what they have, but I don't want them to be better than me, right? This type of indignation. Um, this is sinful, right? We shouldn't. Uh, uh, and this is in some ways, St. Thomas points out, um, this is when your neighbor doesn't really deserve it, but gets it, right? And you say, oh, this person doesn't really, you know, let's see, a neighbor, it's just a regular neighbor, right? And they win the lottery and you go, if I would have won the lottery, I would have given it to build an orphanage. I would have done something good with it. My neighbor is going to just waste it, right? They don't deserve to have won the lottery. Of course, it's completely random, so nobody deserves it. But, uh, right, it's indignation that it's not that they got a promotion or something that they deserved. You're resentful that they didn't deserve it and they have it anyway. And lastly, uh, grieving grieving because of another another's good surpasses our own now this saint thomas says is truly envy in its in its true form right uh we have a certain amount of goods our neighbor has a certain amount of goods and when we grieve that our neighbor's good surpasses our own goods it is just pure envy right it's uh you are sorrowing over the good of your neighbor right uh, that's you could rejoice that your neighbor has it, right? That would be fine, but you, you're sorrowful because your neighbor has it. Now, is envy a mortal sin, right? So, um, St. Thomas says, well, we have to look at it in terms of its genus. So its genus, right, is taken from the object. So what is the object of envy that you don't want your neighbor to have this good that you want for yourself, right? You don't want your neighbor to have a certain good, right? That's the object of envy, right? Well, what is the, what's the problem with that? Well, if what we're supposed to do is to live according to charity, right? That we dwell in, we abide in God and enjoy God for God's own sake. And we love God for God's own sake and that love of God, charity, then extends to the human race, right? Extends to the rest of creation because everyone else is God's friend or God's thing, right? So as an extension of God, you love your neighbor and you abide with your neighbor and you want what's best for your neighbor. You treat your neighbor as another self, right? This type of friendship that comes from charity if the thing that you want for your neighbor is something bad to happen, right? They got something good, but you wish they got something bad, or you wish they got nothing, right? This is not charity, right? Because if you were to live according to charity, you would want good for your neighbor the way you would want good for yourself, right? To the idea of friendship being 
uh, your friend is like another self, right? So if you wish you won the lottery, then you should wish your neighbor won the lottery too. Or if your neighbor got a promotion uh, and you would like a promotion, then you should be happy for your neighbor, right? So then your neighbor gets the promotion and you wish they did not. You wish they got fired. Well, that's not very charitable, right? It's not very loving uh, that you want something bad to happen to your neighbor. So to that degree, it is the opposite of charity. And that which is opposite of charity is a mortal sin, right? Now, it could also be a venial sin. And there's an element of it that could even just be purely a passion, right? So, you know, you're, maybe your fingers are crossed. You hope that you get that promotion at work, right? You're hope, you've been hoping, you've been talking at home, telling your spouse how you can't wait to get, you hope to get this promotion you think is going well. I think I'm really going to get it. And they go to at the business meeting and they announce it's the other person. They got the promotion, not you. That you immediately feel sorrow, right? disappointment. Right? This isn't a sin. Right? It's not a sin to say, oh, I really wanted it for myself and I didn't get it. I'm sad. Right? The, the sorrow that comes from not getting it isn't a sin. Right? This is just the passions, it's just the emotions, it's the sensitive appetite. It's not anything, um, it's not rational, right? You haven't raised it to reason, right? And you might feel sorrow and then say, oh, but, you know, Jane will do a great job and I'm happy for her, right? Now, you still might be sad for yourself, but you can say, yeah, she'll do a good job, yeah. You know, once you raise your emotions up to the light of reason, you can say, yeah, I'm still sad for myself, but I'm happy for her, right? Then it, it, it's, not a, a, it's not a sin, right? They're just the emotion. Now, there's something in between hating your neighbor in some sense, right? Being envious of your neighbor for having something good and then just the pure emotion. There can be a certain amount of sensuality that remains where we say i'm really mad about that or, i'm really disappointed about that i'm really sorrowful for a, about that i wanted that position right i wanted it so but jane's a good candidate i know but i wanted it <laughs> right i would have been better at it right it, it, now if it's not true if you were equally qualified or jane was more qualified and you still are resentful against jane uh, this can be a venial sin, right? It, it can be, right? And if you bring it too far, it could become a mortal sin. If you wanted something actually negative to happen, right? It could go even further. And lastly, in terms of a capital vice, and again, if you don't know, capital vice would make it be, be like one of the seven deadly sins, right? The seven deadly sins are capital vices. And capital vices are like a mother they give birth to children right so if you are a capital vice you will give birth to more vices right so is this the vice that then leads to other vices or is this the end right is this the conclusion of the vices well saint thomas points out using saint gregory because saint gregory is the one that writes on this in uh, in his text on morals uh, he says, envy incites man to do certain things with the purpose either of avoiding sorrow uh, or of satisfying its demand, right? So if you experience envy, and you dwell in envy, then it will lead you to things that try to avoid the sorrow that you feel when you're envious or satisfying their demand of you having it yourself, right? So then it could lead to coveting your neighbor's possession, right? Yeah. Your neighbor gets a new lawnmower and you want that lawnmower. So you, you start to plot on how you're going to steal the lawnmower. I don't know how you'd get away with that, but, um, right? So you want it for yourself, right? Or you're gonna stick a screwdriver in it and break it so that the first time he drives it, it falls apart or something like that, right? So. If you're, this envy could lead to other actions, right? And, and what are some of these daughters of 
envy, hatred, that one's quite obvious, right? Mad that somebody got something that you think you, you should have, um, tail bearing, right? Gossiping behind people's backs about it, right? Detraction, right? especially if it's somebody who's above you, um, joys of your neighbor's misfortune, or grief of his prosperity, right? These are all quite clearly could happen if you experience envy, these could then follow, right? That, that would be what a capital vice is about. And this makes sense, uh, and it's consistent with what St. Gregory wrote. So in conclusion, envy, like sloth, is a type of sorrow, right? Contrary to charity, uh, it is a sin, right? Because it, it's not just fearful that others will do you harm, but you don't like it in and of itself, right? In and of itself, you want it, not you don't want them to have it, right? Um, and it's a mortal sin because if something good happens for you to your neighbor, we should be happy for our neighbor, right? We should be out of charity. We should we should love that our neighbor got something good, just as you would you should love if you got something good, right? When you treat our neighbor as our friend, then. If your neighbor gets something good, it is as if we have received something good. We are happy when our friends get something good. Um, and it, envy is a capital sin because it leads to other sins. And I think that's quite obvious that envious people end up doing other things to sabotage uh, the person they're envious of, which then leads to even more sin, right? So. Sin one leads to sin 10, right? At least uh, all these other sins follow from the vice of envy. So this is a very short section. I hope you enjoyed it. And next we will move into the acts which are contrary to charity, uh, the external acts.